I spent the last several hours trying to get my thoughts together about the incident that happened at our nation's capital yesterday. I want to begin by extending my heartfelt prayers to those who lived through that traumatizing and horrifying experience and to their families who watched in real time and feared for their safety. I also want to extend my gratitude to the men and women in law enforcement who did their best to quell an angry mob of domestic terrorists hell-bent on disrupting our nation's institutions. I also want to address the elephant that is in the room, that for so many people who were shocked and horrified by the images of people hanging from the walls, scaling walls, entering offices, and one of the most disturbing to me a man walking the halls with a large Confederate flag in 2021. It is a shock to see the Confederate flag walking through the United States Capitol. But while it was shocking and these images disturbing, and as many have said, this is an America, I gotta be honest with you. As appalling as it was, it wasn't surprising. As disgusting, as it was, it wasn't surprising. We've been here, I've seen this. I would say that it is almost a privilege to be shocked by what we saw yesterday. Shocked that in the United States, there are those who cling to white supremacy so strongly and so fervently that they would engage in the exercise that they did. I'm not shocked because even here in Chicago, I've seen it firsthand. On April 1st, 2019, four white nationalist groups gathered with members of an organization I had never heard of at the time called QAnon to attend a march that was organized by the head of the Fraternal Order of Police that was attended by the current head of the Fraternal Order of Police. And at that event, with members of the Proud Boys and others, racist rhetoric, horrifying things that were said, not just about me, but about Laquan McDonald, about the movement for Black lives, was a shock to the system. I know firsthand what that hate looked like. I didn't know who QAnon was then. I see the pictures now of John Catanzara posing with them. I was unfamiliar with the Proud Boys until the Sun-Times ran an article about their hateful ways. I couldn't for the life of me understand why white nationalist groups would feel comfortable in the company of those who were protesting the decision by my office. 